design a parking lot it's quite a common question asked during the system design interview if you are being interviewed for big companies like google amazon and facebook etc so first thing as in a system design interview we should start collecting the requirements and ask clarifying question let's try to phrase some clarifying questions which we can ask the, our interviewer okay the first question what comes to mind is how big is the parking lot suppose the interviewer says us that the number of maximum number of cars that that we can park to the 10000 okay in the second how many entrances and exits will be there in the parking lot so we suppose the interviewer says us Entrance has four, and exits also four. Then the third one, what we can ask the interviewer is, will there be a signboard at the entrance and the exits, or the near the entrance, at least showing how many vacant number of spots are there? So we say we have it. Signboard stating. Vacant spots, right? The fourth one, what we can ask is what type of vehicles and what type of parking spots we will be having. So, suppose uh, type of parking spots, what we will have in our system is uh, uh, one for handicapped, and then the second one may be. For compact cars, and the third one may be for SUVs, and the fourth one may be for two wheelers, right? Then we can ask what types of cars we will have. So Suppose we have a truck, we can put this truck in, uh, can we put this truck in SUVs or the large car spots? So we can say this like uh, large spots. So we can say vehicle type. So vehicle type will have uh, maybe a bus, a small car, and big SUV, say bus or truck, and then maybe bikes or scooters. Yeah, that's quite good. And the next thing, what we, how we will do the billing. So we'll say, we'll do the billing at the exits. exits then the seventh one can be what kind of payments we will accept we'll accept cash credit card and maybe google pay right how we will charge our customers so we will charge hourly or per minutes minutes of car park Suppose we will charge them by minutes per charge and we will support all these payments. We'll do the billing at the exits and rest of the requirements what we stated here. Keeping these requirements in mind, we'll try to build our system. Since we want to show our object oriented programming skills, we will try to design the system from bottom to the up. That is, first we'll try to design the classes of these smaller components and then try, we will try to pick the big class, which will be the class for whole of this parking lot. Okay, so let's take some space and try to design. Change the color. Like a smaller pen, yeah. 
So what kind of, we stated that will support like four kinds of vehicles. And we can take these vehicles as like an enum, but it's better to not to take them like an enum because if you take like an enum at the later stage when we have to add a new type of car or a new type of vehicle which you can support, then you have to do changes at a lot of spaces in your whole program or your whole source code. So it's better to take it like a class and we can have an abstract class that is like a vehicle and all these smaller types will extend from that abstract class. So we designed one abstract class. Right. And we say this is an abstract class. So we write in italics vehicles and the generic properties what this abstract class can have is let's try to change this to black string is the number plate that will be very common and then will be type That will be a vehicle type. Right. And then we can have a abstract method here, which basically says uh, the method which will be implemented by the classes which will extend this. So we can have, if we are in C, so we will have a virtual method. We'll say, virtual int assigned equal to zero okay and what will extend these so we show extension in object oriented by this kind of arrow and then the type of vehicles what will support here and the first one So if we go up and we see we're having bus, a truck, small car, big SUV, and bike. We say is bus, small car, SUV truck right and then the next thing what we want to do, build now or add to our system is the parking spot right because these park there we will have parking spot like for handicap or compact car for large car and for big large car or big like cars like truck and bus and for the two wheelers and this will basically uh, this parking lot again will be like a abstract class and different types of parking lot will be like another classes which will extend from this so mm -hmm. if i sign here another box and we say this is parking lot right and this parking lot will have generic things like and in let's take a black pen in teacher would be a parking lot number or you can say as an ID and then we'll have if say it's free or not so it's a boolean is free and then we can have what kind of parking lot is type can be a string or parking lot type 
and then we can have a virtual function which basically can get us uh, if it is free because it's an abstract class so we'll have a pure virtual function and then c plus plus so it's basically we'll write virtual bool get if free to zero right now there will be classes which we will extend from this abstract class so parking spots that they will support we wrote something wrong here we should have this as parking spot not a parking lot because parking lot is a bigger class what we have we say here parking spot and then the first one what we were supposed to support is handicapped then we can have large spots that will support big SUVs and then we can have big SUVs plus with class compact spots and then we can have two wheeler spots and all these will extend this abstract class right and what relationship it we will have between this parking spot and the vehicle is a can call b so basically it's like an association so we have to draw an association from it as right so then now the next thing is what we have to design is like uh, let's think about the smaller component so the next smaller component what we have is showing how showing on a display how many spots are available which are not being used so if i design another class called display and we will say like an integer let's take it black integer spots which are available and we can have an id because we can have at different entrances right because we had four entrances so id will be an integer let's make cleanly so it's an integer and we have an id relating it to the which exits or entrance it has cool it can also have a method and which will be show which will show if the spots are available or not right now we can we should have a class for the next smaller component which we want to decide is the entrance and the exits right the entrance and the exits so we can have two classes one entrance and the one exit and our big singleton class which will be the parking lot will if we have four exits and four entrances we can create four instances of this exits and the entrance classes and that will be existing in the big singleton class that will be the parking lot one call entrance and for the exits exit entrance and then this can have their id which will be an integer integer id
print method and here also print method which will print our tickets basically at the entrance it will print the ticket and maybe at the exit we can have a method called maybe accept the ticket that will be a better thing to say or validate ticket right okay now a ticket can be can itself be a separate class right because it will have properties like time at which the car came time at which the car leaving the price what has to be charged and the payments also related to that so let's have one more class called small component which will be component of our system and we call this as ticket right and this will have properties and methods we'll say integer as an id then we'll have date and time so date and time we'll have a timestamp and th that will basically give us when it came and when it exit and then again date and time one more that will be the date and time exit and then one will have how much amount it has to pay you can have a double amount right and then we can also have something like a status it's paid or it's not paid and enum basically so we can say it's type as a status which can be paid or not paid paid not paid pending right and then we'll have another class called uh, after class called payments which will basically do the different kinds of payments and it will it, we want to have it as a separate class because we are accepting credit card cash and later we will accept google pay maybe some other kind of payment services comes like amazon pay at that time we just have to extend that abstract class and implement another type of payment system so it's better to have payment also as an abstract class so if we design here then okay and then we'll have different properties here also like amount date and time status and then we can have a method called transaction virtual transaction equal to zero and then we'll have different classes which will inherit from this so we'll say credit card Then we can have cash and we can also have Google Pay right this will be our payments thanks so what is left which we basically promised to design a system now we can make our bigger class and and this bigger class will be our whole parking system or whole parking parking lot you say and this will com compose all the different small classes what we have drawn let's try to try it next time try a different color will be nice This is our parking lot SAP class. And we can have different parking. We, we want to reuse the whole software, right? So we can have different parking lot in different areas. So we will have some basic 
properties here like integer and ID and address, maybe a GPS location, right? And then the basic methods what we can have here is add entrance, add exits, and then get get a parking ticket. Get a parking ticket and many things just you can pull off. Maybe one more if it's full. Like is full. Now this will compose or has an instance of all the smaller class what we are doing. So we'll try to state this composition by the UML line. So let's try to give this composition. So display, uh, it will have display. I think it's like a diamond kind of a box. Right. This will have and then there will be association between the parking uh, entrance and the exits with the tickets. So we can show this association by this one, uh, this one. That's also fine. Okay. One more thing can be the parking rate. So which can have, we, we can have another class which will basically state first the parking rate and what kind of parking rate we can use now so that the government or the organization who is taking care of the parking lot can change the parking rate by hour or by will by hour or by minutes of parking. So we can have another class here. Uh, parking rate and we can say level hourly double by minutes and you can have which one to use so you can also have a method basically stating active method it states if we are using a hourly rate or if we are using a per minute rate. So this will also have an instance of this one, which will be used for but, uh, while instantiating classes for entrance exits and the tickets. Okay, I think we covered most of the basic thing. A follow-up question in this system design interview is generally to test your data structures and algorithm knowledge. One possible question which is generally asked is, suppose you have a constraint that you want to select a parking spot which is closest to the entrance when the car is coming in. How you can do that? What kind of data structure you want to use in order to do this? One possible solution for this is using a min heap. So what we'll do, we'll have like four spots, then four kinds of parking spots, uh, handicap, large, compact, and two-wheeler. We can have four min heaps, and then we can get the parking spot which is closest to that particular entrance, and we can get that in big of one time, right? And while creating the min heap or while pushing it, we have a log of n time because it's something like a tree structure in which you have to do uh, when you are putting in or when you're pushing in the data, at that time you have to push the data or basically reset all of the tree structure so that the min heap property is maintained. So that's a possible question which can be asked. And if this video is helpful for you, please do like and subscribe so that I can make more videos in the future. Thank you.